Hello everyone and welcome to part 2 of the flower tutorial in Blender's Geometry Notes. Today we're gonna make the actual flower shape, right? We're gonna scatter those petals with repeat zones. Alright, so if you enjoy this, if it is of any help, please leave a like, subscribe, leave a comment. I'll enjoy any one of those and let's dive in. So now what? How do we proceed? We have our petal, we need a core. Okay, so let's create a core. And the core I have in mind is something like a little... Um, I don't know, the shape I just visualized with my hands, I guess. A little core shape. <laughs> Shift A. Let's find a curve line. That's all we need, basically, and connect that up. There we go. And we can just hit Shift A, Curve to Mesh. And the profile curve is going to be a curve circle. There we go. That is the wrong one. That's not a curve circle. Curve circle. There we go. And the radius is, well, fine. The resolution can be a bit lower, 24 perhaps, maybe even lower. We'll see. Right, so this does not look like a core at all. So how do we change that? Well, we need to set the curve radius, first of all. Shift A, set curve radius. There we go. And the radius is going to depend on the spline parameter once again. Right there. Beautiful. So this is not looking like the right way is up. So we're going to flip that in a second. But first things first, we need a little bit more geometry in our curve line. Otherwise, we have two points and we can't really get a rounding, right? So shift A and resample that curve to, let's say, 16 points for now. Sure. And shift A, find a float curve and then drag that in there. Amazing. Now swap these around. Amazing. Add a little bit of a curvature. And set this one to zero as well. And now we can just create the shape we want, pretty much. Something like this, perhaps. Who knows? And we can just crank down the radius of our curve a little bit. Like that. Right. Beautiful. Now maybe we need a bit more geometry. Let's see. I think this looks... Actually, I want this to be straighter at the end, perhaps. Something like this. Let's decrease our end point. There we go. Reason why is because I want to have those little um, stringies coming from the core. So I want a little bit of a flat surface there at the end, I think. Something like this. Looking great. And then maybe even up this a little bit like that. And what we can do is just set our count lower like this. And for the radius of the circle as well. So now in the end we can just hit Shift A and add a subdivide surface. This one. I set that to like two. There we go. So we still have a little pointy part, but it's looking smooth at the rest, right? Which is fine. Beautiful. This is going to be our core. And remember, we can always change that later. Amazing. So how do we get this back? Well, just shift A, join geometry back up there and let's connect it. Amazing, right? So now we have two objects that are going to be our little flower. So let's actually decrease the radius of this just slightly. So the curve there and the height as well, just so it's a bit smaller like that. Beautiful. So now we have one petal. So how do we distribute this in a circular array and also as like a core thing there? The closer it comes to the middle, the more inwards it goes pretty much. Right. So how do we do that? It is very easy. Shift A, repeat zone. There we go. Let's drag this to the right, and we need to connect this in between there, and we don't need that one, right? So now it's beautifully connected. So we have a repeat zone, inputs and outputs, and the first thing I do when I add a repeat zone is drag this window down and set this to be a spreadsheet. Because if you work with a repeat zone, you can have a lot of geometry very, very quickly because you repeat your geometry over and over again. And it's going to get very messy very quickly. So we need to keep an eye on that, right? So we want this to be repeated and rotated at every repetition. So we can hit Shift A and find a transform geometry. Now, even if I rotate this in the Z direction, you can see it works, but it doesn't really add new geometry. And the reason why is because we need to join our original, our input geometry, back up here as well, so that we have both as an output. So hit Shift A, join geometry. And I want the input to join with uh, the transform, and that is going to be the output. All right, so now if I rotate this in the Z direction, you can see we're actually getting two petals, right? Isn't that beautiful? So I want this to be 
um, well, let's say how many do we need, right? So you can see every iteration I'm adding geometry. But you can also see that in my spreadsheets, we already have almost 400,000 face corners, which is quite a lot if you ask me, right? We need to keep that in mind. So how do we reduce that amount? Well, at every repetition, it is repeating the ones before, which means if I have one repetition, this contains, well, let's set this to zero. We have one petal. If I add one, it is going to add one extra, but also the original geometry, right? So we have the original, the extra, and then we join the original back up. We have three petals. If I do this one again, it is going to repeat what we already had, add one, and then stack it up, right? So we are going to keep adding geometry, which is why this is increasing exponentially, right? So how to fix that? Well, it is all overlapping geometry. So after each repetition, we just need a merge by distance node and it's going to crank it right down to much, much, much more um, general numbers, right? So this is looking quite nice. So let's say we want eight or nine repetitions. Maybe eight works better. Maybe nine. Nine is fine. So let's say we want nine. So how many degrees of is that going to be in rotation terms? Well, let's not do that math in our heads. Let's just create a little function. Quite easy. I'm going to hit Shift A and find an integer. And this is going to be nine repetitions. And usually when you add nine here, it means that we're actually needing only eight repetitions because we have our original geometry. That's one petal. And then we only need to repeat that eight times to get to a number of nine, right? That makes sense. So I'm just going to drag that out to math, set it to subtract, and just subtract one from that number and connect that in the iterations. Beautiful. Now, how do we get that angle to distribute it completely evenly? Very easy. We need a circle is how many degrees? 360. Shift A, math. We're going to start with uh, no, divide and set this to 360 degrees, right? 360. There we go. So we want 360 degrees divided by how many segments we have. So how many petals, which is going to be our integer number right there. So divide that. And then the output is going to be a number of degrees. But we need to drag this out to a combine X, Y, Z. And now this number is actually a radian, right? It's not a degree. So we need to convert our degrees for each segment back to a radian, and then it's going to be back to a rotation value, right? So drag that out to, um, I think we can just type in two radians. There we go. And then this is going to be connected to that Z rotation value. All right, there, beautiful. So now every time we just change our integer, you can see that it distributes it evenly and nicely. Amazing. So we can have a little bit of an overlap and perhaps just rotate our um, our petals just a little bit, right? So drag that out, shift A, transform geometry, and let's just rotate it a little bit in that, which direction we need it to be, X, X, right? So it just doesn't overlap, but it looks like it's an intricate kind of system, right? So it overlaps just a tiny little bit. I think that looks nice. Maybe a little bit more. No, I think we're good. I think we're good, right? So if I want this to be, um, well, distributed along the core, so it actually falls inwards a little bit, we can actually just add another just, um, repeat zone, right? So if this one is rotating our pedals and extra adding extra ones. And the next one... We want this to be folding it inwards a little bit. And it's a very easy way to just get that. Shift A, add a new repeat zone. Connect that up here and up there. Delete this. And then what we want to have happen in here is we need another transform geometry. Obviously, something needs to happen. Some, some transformation needs to be done. Shift A right away. Just add a delete jump, no, not delete, merge by distance. There we go, to prevent those numbers from going through the roof. And then we need a join geometry right there. That is going to go in there, this in there as well. And then this is going to go to the merge by distance. Quite easy, isn't it? Right, so to rotate that inwards alongside the core, 
Um, there's two ways to do that, and the easiest way in this case is to actually rotate or create a re repetition of our petal rotating inwards right before we actually scatter it in the or rotate it in the circular array. Right, so we need to add right after this a little repeat zone. Repeat zone. Connect that in here. Let me clean this just a little bit because we're gonna get lost. There we go. Let's move that a bit closer there. And in this repeat zone, we are going to need the same we had in here, right? So we need a merge by distance, a joint geometry, and a transform geometry, basically. So what I'm going to do is just add that. So first things first, transform geometry. Next up, joint geometry. And then we can connect this one up there as well. And then a merge by distance. Amazing. Now, what I want to do here is I just want to rotate that inwards a little bit on, let's see which axis our is in on the y direction right so i can just rotate that in y and you can see that we're rotating our pedals inwards a little bit isn't that crazy right and we can rep whoa we can <laughs> create as many repetitions as we want for that let's say two or three or four beautiful and it's gonna keep rotating inwards with that specific value right and eventually it's gonna achieve the core level amazing now with every repetition i also want to scale it slightly down i guess in every axis except the let's say z perhaps let's try it there we go looks a little better but perhaps you want to scale it down more in one specific axis let's see yes i think so this one looks better there we go Something like this, right? So now with every repetition, it's also getting a little bit smaller and thinner. So how do we take care of this looking like it is completely in the same axis? Well, we can just add a little bit of Z rotation in the same, well, the same value, I guess, something like that. And that's already looking way better. Okay, so in this case, we have some Z rotation and some X rotation, and that is perfectly fine. Looking beautiful, right? And then, of course, the scaling of this all depends on your scale values. So you can just go nuts with that as well. See what you like, how thick you want your flower thingies to be. Something like this actually looks quite nice. All right, so I'm going to save that. It's going to be my flower head pretty much. And in the end here, what do we want as well? I want some random noise. Of course, this all looks way too straight. So let's actually add some shift A um, set position. And the offset is going to be a noise texture. All right, that looks exactly what we needed, isn't it? Shift A, <laughs> vector math. Set this to subtract and subtract 0.5 right away. That will make it move back to the center. Now, if everything looks like it is going in like a diagonal direction, it means you connected the vector instead of the color. So connect the color and we got it, right? Isn't that beautiful? Now, this is way too strong, obviously, and the scale is too big. So I'm going to set the detail to zero and crank down my scale. Just so we're getting closer to that original shape of our flower. Perhaps something like this. And I'm going to hit Shift A. And actually, let's just duplicate that subtract node. There we go. And set that to scale. And we can make it a little bit less strong as well. All right, less strong and perhaps even up the scale a little bit. So it becomes more, more of like a random look on those petals. Something like, well, that's perhaps a bit too too large of a skill. Let's try something like point or two. This looks quite all right, I guess. Something like that. And I up the skill slightly. All right, so now everything looks a little bit more chaotic, a little bit more random. So that was part two of the flower tutorial, right? I hope you liked it. If you did, please leave a like, a comment, and subscribe. Any one of those will make me incredibly happy. In the next one, we'll focus more on the strands, right? And the stringy parts that come from the core of the flowers. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one.